Hello everybody, this is Broke on Records, back again, uh, I don't know, I got nothing, this is the Hip Hop Vinyl Tag, I saw, turn, turn that boom and bass down a little bit, um, saw Vinyl Richie do a version of this, and uh, as Vinyl Richie is known to, to do, I know he changed a few of the questions so I wanted to go back and find the original which I think was uh, usually named Daryl D um, and I've been listening to a lot of hip hop lately and I've bought some new hip hop records and thought I would, there's the cat um, jump in on this and more vinyl finds to come and other things and the usual shit you guys get on this channel so um, oh you know what I don't have is the list of questions. Can I go from memory? Let's find out. Okay. There's 15 questions uh, that I don't know if I'm going to do in order. <laughs> All right, whatever. Um, here we go. Question number one is the first hip hop album you've ever purchased. Uh, the first hip hop I ever heard was probably No Shame, No Lie any of Weird Al's rap songs. Most of the ones he was parodying. Amish Paradise, I think, might be the first rap song I've ever, I ever heard. <laughs> um, and then the Beastie Boys. My dad was a big Beastie Boys head, so I got into some of that stuff. Um, but most of the hip-hop discovery, or, you know, most of the hip-hop music that I like I discovered on my own. Neither of my parents were huge hip hop heads. You know, they liked some of the, the golden age stuff, but we're not crazy about any of it. Um, but yeah, Weird Al, Beastie Boys. Um, one of the earliest CDs I remember buying is Danger Doom, Mouse in the Mask, because it was a Adult Swim cartoon inspired album. I had no idea who MF Doom was. I had no idea who Danger Mouse was. Um, I just picked up the CD on the strength that it was all cartoon samples from the things that I liked. And uh, I, I sadly no longer own the CD or the vinyl <laughs> of that that I used to have. Although I know Mouse the Mask is back in print, so I would like to get it. Uh, but one of the earliest hip hop records I ever listened to, and I'm thankful to own a first pressing of it, or hip hop influenced albums. And this is one I was gonna show because I know Vinyl Richie had a question of his of a hip hop record that kind of cross genres, um, this would be an answer for that as well. This is The Transplants, self-titled uh, from 2002, OG. Um, Transplants are a hip hop, alternative punk rock super group featuring uh, Travis Barker of Blink-182 on drums, Tim Armstrong of Rancid on vocals, guitar, and uh, Rob Aston is the uh, the primary rapper on this record. It's very yelly, very screamy, very punk rock aggression, but it's hip hop, punk rock, ska, uh, they do it all. The, the song you would probably recognize from this is Diamonds and Guns, uh, had a bit of notoriety in the 2000s as a, a commercial track, but uh, most of this record is very, very, uh, parental advisory laden <laughs> punk rock hip hop socks <laughs> and that's been reissued I think semi recently too seeing it the reissue but I found that pretty cheap a number of years ago uh, some blue eyed hip hop that is not Eminem or the Beastie Boys like I said I already mentioned the Beastie Boys the only Beastie Boys I own on vinyl is Check Your Head which is the box set which is not uh, I don't have in this apartment and I think Eminem sucks so uh, I'm going to go with and I will say, do not take this information for any more than what it is. A lot of my hip hop collection is white dudes because my two favorite rappers are Aesop Rock and Atmosphere, uh, two artists who I will mention in this video. I don't own a ton of hip hop vinyl. Um, I know hip hop vinyl is a big commodity, but the stuff that is a big commodity is not my particular style of, of hip hop, to be honest. Uh, but I like all kinds. Uh, but anyway, Aesop Rock and Atmosphere, no surprise to anyone. I've talked about them many, many times on the channel. I'll talk about them in this video. So anyway, for my blue-eyed rap pick, I have uh, Post Malone with Hollywood's Bleeding. Um, Post Malone has had a very interesting career arc. He kind of started as this um, 
sort of white R and B. Kind of, he was kind of, like he's kind of like the White Weekend when he started. Uh, moody, atmospheric R and B party tracks, uh, and then he kind of tried to go for a rock angle, and now he's going for a country angle. Um, this I think is his last great record, Hollywood's Bleeding. Uh, the first, like the first one's okay. The second, uh, which is Stony, Beer Bongs and Bentleys, has a lot of great stuff on it. I think this is the peak. And then 12 Carat Toothache, I thought was okay. It had some good songs, but wasn't front to back loaded like I thought this one was. And Austin, his last album, uh, I thought was just, again, kind of okay. Not a lot to latch onto. Uh, I haven't heard any of the country songs. I don't know if I really care, to be honest. I think my. You know, my obsession with Post Malone kind of starts and ends with this record for the most part, but there's a lot of good stuff on it. Straight hip hop, uh, R&B, some kind of alternative and indie rock influences as well. Ozzy Osbourne has a has a vocal feature on the record. Um, it's cool. It's a really, really cool album. Uh, a 10-inch rap record. The only 10-inch I had is... Uh, is Aesop Rock, who I tried, I wanted to try not to show multiple times in this video, but because of the criteria of the questions, I have to. Um, so this is the Freedom Finger 10 inch. This is actually a soundtrack to a video game. Uh, the A side is uh, three songs. It's all Aesop Rock vocals, and then the B side is the instrumentals. Cool stuff, you know, not the not my most listened to Aesop Rock stuff by, by any means, but it's a cool kind of limited release just for the heads. Uh, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to, this question shows up a little bit later, but I'm going to do it now. Um, one of the questions was show seven hip hop seven inches. Well, as you guys know, I do not uh, have most of my seven inches here. And I would be shocked if I even had one hip hop seven inch, not really a genre I look for on that format. So format. So instead I'm going to show five, five inches CDs. <laughs> um, oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to hold off on that because I have a, uh, I have a plan here, I promise. The next question was, favorite female MC, which I don't really own on vinyl, uh, but this was the closest vinyl I had, which is the uh, Vinyl Me Please uh, Santa Gold reissue. Um, but Santa Gold is kind of a mix of reggae, hip hop, indie rock, and electronic music. She does it all. I know she's back on tour this year. I would really like to go see it, but I don't think I will be able to, unfortunately. Um, but was really excited that Von Ami Please reissued this because this is one of those records I kind of discovered in the late 2000s or uh, early 2010s indie rock uh, or, you know, indie blog music sphere. Uh, and it's always kind of been in the back of my mind. So this was a bit of a nostalgic buy, but uh, I was happy to get it because I know this was a pretty desirable one when it came out. So uh, anyway, that's the female MC question. But... The first CD I want to show is also uh, a, a, a kind of an unknown female MC outside of her uh, DMA, is that the acronym? Designated Metro Area, something like that. Uh, Katie Kate from Seattle. This is her album, Nation. This is a really cool kind of uh, dark, muddy hip hop record with a bit of indie and uh, soul influence as well. Uh, you can stream this on Bandcamp. It's very cool. This was a super limited CD edition that's kind of like an art book. It has the CD. I was really, really happy to find this in Chicago because, like I said, she's from Seattle, and I can't imagine a ton of these copies made it outside of the state or, you know, the, the Pacific Northwest. Uh, but, yeah, she's got, I think, just this album, the album before it, and then an EP. I don't think she's done anything in a while, but this is really, really good stuff. Katie Kate Nation. Great disc. Uh, some more indie hip hop. The Nux remind me in three days. Uh, Bang Bang was the single off of this one. This was another one I kind of discovered around the same time as Santa Gold. You know, when I was getting into indie blogs talking about rap music. Um, so this was nice to see you find a while back. Uh, the fantastic Nerd. In search of uh, probably their best. I do like. Uh, seeing sounds a lot as well, but this one I think is sort of the, the gold standard of the catalog. Uh, nice lenticular cover, Usher, Confessions, the best shower album of all time. And some classic Young MC, Stone Cold, Rhyming. 
Uh, all right, back to the vinyl. The last uh, hip hop record you purchased. Uh, some more nostalgic throwback with Tyler the Creator, Goblin. Uh, I was in, I was a freshman in high school when this dropped, which could not have been the more perfect time. <laughs> if you know about the context of Tyler the Creator, Odd Future, the fan base that they uh, sort of bring in to their music, uh, this is primed for freshmen in, in high school. <laughs> um, did not really keep up with Tyler after this record or Odd Future really for that matter. Um, but I hadn't heard this in forever. And I'd been kind of revisiting the, the song Yonkers a lot. And I thought, you know, if I see it in the wild, I'll grab it. And actually this is at Walmart for like 25 bucks or something. And I was like, all right, 25 bucks for nostalgia buy. I'm not mad at it. Um, I kind of had forgotten how kind of lo-fi, scuzzy, and intentionally off-putting this record was. I kind of, like, I I knew that the early Tyler stuff was very intentionally edgy and, um, you know, a bit dated, but did not remember some of the real just, like, uh, uh, purposefully uncomfortable stuff on this record. Whether it's aged well is up for debate, I suppose. Uh, but like I said, this album and Basketball the one that came before it were the ones I listened to a lot. And um, like I said, anything Tyler had done after this, I did not really listen to. I did I, I did pick up uh, Scumfuck Flower Boy, which they also had on a, on a clearance with this. And uh, I know people really love and respect that record, and I couldn't get into it. it. I don't really know. I feel like the music didn't fit Tyler's personality as a rapper. Um, but like I said, I'm listening to it the first time with fresh ears. He's got a lot of newer material that people really like, and uh, I don't know. Maybe I would like some of that stuff more, but I don't know. I lived. I lived through the Yonkers era at a very formative time in my life, so it's very difficult for me to be objective about uh, anything else and stuff. Uh, okay, a hip-hop record that you had, got rid of, and got back again. I uh, had a couple answers for this, but this is the more interesting one, I suppose. Run DMC, Tougher Than Leather. Um, I had an OG of this uh, and an OG of uh, Raising Hell at one point. Ended up, uh, unfortunately, getting rid of both of those but got this nice uh, black and white pinwheel Von Me Please version back in the collection during one of my Von Me Please subscriptions. Uh, and it looks and sounds great. I mean, yeah, it was cool to have an original of this, but objectively this is the, the better pressing of my favorite Run DMC album. Uh, the most valuable hip hop record in your collection. Uh, many uh, some odd videos ago I mentioned uh, one of the most valuable records in my collection was the Dog Pound, Dog Food. I I was really in a fucking spot, and uh, I had to sell it, uh, which means that the next most valuable hip-hop record in my collection now is this Mammoth uh, Atmosphere set. Uh, you can't imagine how much fun we're having. 10-year anniversary edition, 4LP set. It's got a very intricate fold-out, which I will not do here. Uh, a bit of an obnoxious fold-out, if I'm being honest. Rhyme Sayers, um, for as much as I love their music, sometimes their more intricate packaging is not super convenient. Uh, they actually did an Atmosphere 7-inch box set, uh, which has some great songs on it. But when they produced the box set, they made the box too wide, and it when, they, when those uh, boxes had been shrink-wrapped for so long, it was bent, it was bowing the box, which made all the seven inches warped and I couldn't play it. Uh, and I was really pissed off, <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, this is the first time I'd ever heard of Atmosphere was actually on this record. And I think at the time, you know, I was very young and uh, I couldn't quite understand what it was. By the time Life Gives You Lemons came out, I had heard, and I had heard more hip hop music to understand that record, and that's a record I've loved forever. Um, but on reflection, I do like this one quite a bit. Not like an absolute catalog standout, but there's a couple tracks in here that are really, really awesome.
and for a while, um, my triple LP version of Atmosphere Overcast was also one of my most valuable records. But according to Discogs Median, uh, this has now usurped Overcast. But I think if you tried to get both of those records today, I'm pretty sure you could get this one cheaper, I think. Um, okay, a record that incorporates humor. Um, I'm playing a little bit of it in the background, and uh, these are two of my favorite reissues of this year. I could not be more stoked about them. Told to nostalgia buys, but I, I guess my my tug of war with with the phrase nostalgia here is I still genuinely enjoy the music. So is it nostalgia at that point? I don't know. But it is two albums by MC Chris, uh, one of the champions of the nerdcore persuasion of hip hop, uh, which is just white dudes rapping about Star Wars and Harry Potter and, and frankly a lot of things I don't care about. But uh, MC Chris uh, was in the Adult Swim world. He did voices on Aqua Teen Hunger Force and See That 2021. Um, and I've been listening to his mixtape since I was in, in middle school and uh, Say 10 Records, which is like a record label and also a skate brand, I guess. Uh, they put out uh, the Green Jelly reissues. I have one of those that are quite nice. Uh, they're doing, I think, a run of five MC Chris albums. So they do MC Chris is Dead, MC Chris Goes to Hell. These are my two favorites for sure, um, but they're doing uh, MC Chris Forever as well. And then I think probably Race Wars and I don't, I don't know what the fifth one is. I don't think they've announced them all, but these are the two, in my opinion. So I actually got to see MC Chris live this year for the very first time. <laughs> Waited like 20 years to see him live. Had an absolute blast, was super fun. Um, and so I picked this one up at the show, MC Chris Goes to Hell, uh, and then ended up ordering this one from Satan later on, MC Chris is Dead. Uh, super, super fun. Uh, if you're a Star Wars head, the song Fett's Vet is MC Chris's biggest track. Uh, he also had a song called Hoodie Ninja that was on commercials for a little bit of time and then has also just kind of had these cult indie rap, backpack rap, nerdcore hits for people. So um, I, if you're if you're listening to this in the first for the first time in 2024, I don't know if it'll hit, but uh, I was very, very excited to get those on vinyl. And staying in the uh, somewhat nerdcore-ish persuasion, uh, the next question is the hip-hop record you spent the most money on. Uh, this was like 45 to 48 bucks after shipping, which I thought was way too expensive. And especially when it showed up and it was only a single album, I thought it was a double album. But I did enjoy the hell out of this. Uh, this was a recommendation from uh, Tim, at High Noon's Vinyl, uh, of an, a band I did not know until he talked about him. Uh, this is Two Skinny Jays. Uh, this is a compilation of their first two EPs, Return of the New and Improved, and Sing, Earth Boy Sing. Um, yeah, 90, late 90s, kind of, uh, like I said, nerdy, uh, hip-hop, alternative, like kind of when Beck raps, you know, it's kind of in that lane or uh, when Soul Coughing raps, uh, also kind of that lane, but this is like straight hip hop, but a bit alternative as well. Uh, they had a, uh, a, a, their big CD is called Super Mercado. I got that, I listened to it. I liked some of the tracks, but thought it was kind of too long. Uh, I think this is by far the better material. So um, this is a, a really nice presentation of this reissue. Um, I got the picture disc because it was the only one left. I'm not anti-picture disc, but I would not have chosen it if the other one was still available. And uh, I will say the picture disc was $5 more than the color vinyl, which is also kind of annoying. Uh, and like I said, 45 to 48 bucks shipped for a single LP is uh, obscene. But independent release on Bishop Records, I believe is the name of the label. So there's a side A. Now I will say, with all that said, maybe one of my favorite picture disc prints of all time, the great anime uh, artwork from the uh, original Singer Boy Sing cover. For some reason, I feel like this on a picture disc looks amazing, and maybe if I hold it up long enough, it will become the thumbnail of this video. Um, and that just looks quite nice. So, 
more than I would normally pay for something like this, but like I said, it was the only version in print. I don't know if they were gonna do another printing. All the color vinyl ones are going for a Goo Goo Bucks resale. So, did what I had to do. All right, uh, so there's that. The next question is a autographed release. Um, I, I don't have any physically autographed uh, hip hop records or CDs, but I do have this. Uh, one more Aesop Rock record for the video. This is The Impossible Kid, my favorite Aesop, or well, other than Munchal Pass, my favorite Aesop Rock record. Uh, this is the ticket stub from the show. Got him to sign that. I have seen Aesop Rock three times and I've gotten three signatures from him. Uh, one of which is on a seven inch, which uh, obviously I can't show. And one of them was on actually just a piece of paper that I stuck into my Skeleton record, which I couldn't dig out, but I just pulled that one because it was on display. Uh, a hip hop record you have multiple variants of. This was the closest I could get. Uh, let me get some water here. I'm just talking, 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 blabbing, blabbing, blabbing. Um, closest I could get was MC 900 foot Jesus Hell with the lid off with DJ Zero. One of my favorite uh, hip hop records ever. This is more uh, white hip hop. He is a. Uh, uh, but was also part of the kind of industrial scene of the 90s. I'm going to show another record right after this that's in that industrial hip-hop crossover. Actually, the next two after this are industrial hip-hop crossover records. Um, but this thing is fucking amazing. Released on Network 1989, uh, I believe, or 88. I think it's 89. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, the song Truth is Out of Style, one of my favorite tracks ever in recorded music. I think it's amazing. Um, so... As far as multiple versions go, I only have one version of the album, but I do have both of the 12-inch singles for Truth Is Out of Style, and I'm going straight to heaven. The 12-inch version of Truth Is Out of Style is so fucking good. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, but the whole album is great. All of the MC 900 Foot Jesus records are amazing. I would highly recommend the last one, um, which is called One fuck, what's it called? One with the spider? Along came the spider, something like that. Um, one foot ahead of the spider? <laughs> I don't know. Some, something about the spider. Uh, that is the third record. A lot of ambient, kind of space jazz stuff on that record, but also some straight hip-hop. Um, a hip-hop on an independent label. This is the debut 12-inch by Canadian industrial hip-hop group Consolidated, um, who I got very, very into after I saw them live for the first time a handful of years ago. Um, they have some great stuff, super outspoken, super political industrial hip-hop. This is their first 12-inch on Zoth Amag, uh, pressed in Germany, debut Consolidated 12-inch. Not my favorite Consolidated stuff, but it is very cool. It's, you know, a little bit before they, they kind of nailed in their sound. Um, but uh, the three LPs that they have after this are all magnificent. So uh, if you're into that, I would check those out. And then uh, a album, uh, what the fuck is this one? <laughs> Rapper from a, uh, a non-American, a country foreign to yours from the great England. <laughs> not, not the Great Britain. <laughs> MC Tunes. The only rhyme that bites. Uh, this is a collaboration between MC Tunes, as you'd imagine, and uh, I believe 808 State. Yes, 808 State does the production on this record. So it's super high energy, 90s uh, British club electronica with some just hard ass rhymes over it. Uh, this is a fantastic record released on ZTT, uh, one of the finest in uh, 80s and 90s electronic music record labels. Highly recommended. Uh, and then an album that has multiple covers. I only have one of the covers, but if you look it up, you'll find the other one. This is uh, Spank Rock, uh, underrated rapper, also a rapper I discovered early on through Adult Swim. Adult Swim were champions of hip hop, and I got into a lot of rappers through them. Uh, Witch Doctor, Killer Mike, Spank Rock, MC Chris, Aesop Rock. Uh, I also got into through uh, Adult Swim compilations 
Um, I think they did some stuff with Tyler the Creator and All Future. Anyway, this is Spank Rock. Everything is boring and everyone is a fucking liar. Uh, an amazing uh, kind of weirdo electronic hip hop record from uh, 2011. Uh, the vinyl cover is this. The CD cover is much, much different. It's like a uh, like a picture of a shelf with a bunch of knickknacks and shit on it. Um, but yeah, my skate fold. This comes on yellow wax on the inside. Uh, really good stuff. If you're not familiar with Spank Rock, I would check this record. This record was super... This You get this record for like five bucks at one point because they printed too many. Now I think you'd probably have to pay closer to retail, like the 20 ish dollar range, but super dope if you can find it. Long ass video. Goodbye.